And welcome to Lala's World. Um, normally, I will be filming from my actual room, but I'm not even at my state of residence. Right now, I'm actually visiting home. Home meaning is where I was born and raised. I'm actually in Brooklyn, New York right now. I actually am in my hotel room and this segment is based on for all my wrestling fans out there, wrestling geeks. But before we can get started, make sure you subscribe. The subscribe button is somewhere below. Like, comment, share this video amongst your friends. So, this segment, because of the fact that it's finally now WrestleMania week, um, I'm going to name the top five WrestleMania moments. So, number five. And I'm going to leave all the links of where I get my information from down below in the description box. Also, if you haven't seen any of my wrestling segments, I'll leave the links down there too. So, number five. Who remembered... And this just, and I'm bringing up past and present. Who remembered, I will say, probably most recently, I would say last year, when John Cena finally popped the question to Nikki Bella. I did. Everybody else in Orlando, Florida did. Everybody went crazy. I think I remember it was like bets in Las Vegas that John Cena was going to pop the question. So when that occurred um i was just thinking no matter of fact i said it i was like jesus christ it's about time i mean no shade to john cena and nikki i know they was bound to get married even though people was like oh they're never gonna get married they, they was gonna get married they was gonna tie the knot it would just have the right moment i mean props to him for keeping the ring in his pants throughout the whole match you know Kudos for that. Um, so that is number five when John Cena pops the question to Nikki Bella. Now let's go ahead and turn back the hands of time. And I probably was like a little tater tot when this occurred. Um, this WrestleMania moment was when Randy Savage, Macho Man Randy Savage and Sensational Sherry, I believe they lost the match. I don't recall to whom. If you guys know who it is, please comment below. Randy Savage lost um, at WrestleMania. I don't recall which WrestleMania it was. I'm, I'm going to say nine. Because I kept seeing this moment over and over again. So I'm going to assume it's WrestleMania nine. Again, if I'm wrong, please comment below the right WrestleMania. Um, he lost the match. And Sensational Sherry was so pissed. Like It was just like, you messed up. She beat him down as if he took the rent money and spent it on some J's or spent it on like the biggest next big iPhone or Samsung Galaxy phone or tablet. Like she straight beat him up and all you can see is Miss Elizabeth. Oh, poor Miss Elizabeth. You know, she was all pretty before she got all, you know, a little washed up, you know, before her passing. God rest her soul, she's still pretty. Um... She couldn't take it no more. And all I see her is running down the, down the aisle towards the ring. It was like, no, you're not going to beat my man like that. We're going we gonna to have some war words. And she just took Sensational Sherry and just threw Shorty out the ring. And then all of a sudden, Randy Savage realized, like, oh, my God. I fucked up. This was my girl right here. She was my main chick. That was she. Sensational Sherry was soppy, just something to do. And he just realized, you know, David was reunited. I think the whole audience was crying. I remember when I first saw it, I was just like, oh my God. Now I see why everybody was crying. Because when I was a kid, I saw it, I was just like, oh, what's going on? But as watching it, you know, I had a little gangster tear in my eye. Don't judge me, y'all. I cry too sometimes. Um, so I remember that one. So that was WrestleMania moment number four. Now we're about to go digging more into the past. Now let's remember WrestleMania 20 when another person, um, I would say another set of two people who is no longer here and they are at a special place in life right now uh, when Chris Benoit won the World's Heavyweight Championship 
And then he was like celebrating, and then all he looks, oh, he turns around, he sees Eddie Guerrero greeting with him, holding his championship in his hand, because they both became champions that same night, and all they remember, they just embraced each other with hug. That showed like a sign of respect, because they both were down at that road with each other at wrestling and of that nature. They hug, they cry. Did I cry? Did I no, I didn't cry, I, I just applaud. So that was another WrestleMania moment when Eddie Guerrero greeted, you know, Chris Benoit out of showing a sign of respect, like, hey man, you did it. You did it. You you won. You got this. Um, so that was awesome. Now, number two. And I put this on this list because I was not expecting this to happen because of the whole big controversy and the whole scandal. You remember that situation where Seth Rollins' ex-fiance leaked his nudes and then leaked them, what, Zahara's nudes all over the internet? So he had to like calm it down. Even though he was the money in the bank, he was Mr. Money in the Bank, he still had to calm it down. So the WrestleMania that occurred, I don't want, don't know which WrestleMania is because a lot of shit happens a lot on WrestleMania. It was Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. And this, I think this is when it was the first time Roman Reigns was going against Brock Lesnar. And that's when Bro Roman Reigns was getting introduced to Suplex City. But yo, he ate it. He was like, yo, I, I'm going to make my residential. I'm going to make my stay. But what happened was all you hear is Seth Rollins' music come down. And you just see this man running down the ring with his briefcase. And that's freaking hard. To run down the ring and the the length of that time that that ramp was, it wasn't long like the last year WrestleMania. No, that one was like, it was long, but it was just like for him to run all the way down there with the briefcase in his hand, cash it in, then to be champion that night, that sets a lot of volumes because at that time, he was still getting a lot of heat because of those nudes that was leaked because of his ex-fiance. Because at the time, Seth Rollins was cheating on her with that chick named Zahara. So, um, Zahara was that was somebody who was at NXT, but she never debuted because of the fact that she got fired because they found some racist stuff on tweets. And sometimes y'all gotta watch what y'all post. Y'all gotta watch what y'all post. So, with Seth Rollins cashing in and become champion that same night that's like a big re that's like a big props right there because it's you know it's very rare you see something like that but it's something something like this happened and I missed out on it comment down below I could be wrong because I was always like I was kind of in and out of wrestling here there because I didn't have cable and it views like that and the last one, oh, I remember this from the back of my hand. Like me and my friend, my I would call him my best friend. He's like a brother to me. My friend Shay, we will normally talk about this. It was the one where Triple H and Undertaker went out at WrestleMania, and this was the second time because we call it as the end of an era. At that time, Shawn Michaels was the guest referee being a little patty batty and he thought oh well I got the power in my hands I can call it down the middle what it whoop de whoop da 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 but that's when he realized shit got real because he realized that he's looking at his best friend and he's looking at the man who retired him but Undertaker's not gonna stay down Triple H is getting pissed off and then Shawn Michaels somehow interjected himself in the match and it didn't work and it looked like you screwed with the devil and you got caught. It was like Shawn Michaels was crying in the corner. I was like, oh my God, like what is, what is what's going on? Like we all gonna need therapy after this. Um, it was along the lines like nobody was not giving up. Afterwards went throughout that whole mess, like they put their whole bodies on the line, even Shawn Michaels. And he was just a special guest referee. They were done. Undertaker won. And it was really a final end of an era. And all three of them could do is just hug it out. That's all we could do, just hug it out. You know, it's the end of the era. 
tried, failed, tried again, failed. So you stab me. At that time, Undertaker felt like, you know, Undertaker was unstoppable until that situation occurred on WrestleMania 30. We cannot speak of it. You know, the whole streak went. Yeah. Not cool. Not cool. But it had to happen. So, um, what's to say, and I'm not trying to be like, bring some bad juju, but New Orleans was where the Undertaker streak ended. Who's to say, and I'm sorry, if y'all don't feel like this, I mean, I know y'all probably gonna come at me in these comments. Just don't, I'm sorry. Who said Oscar Street might end? Just saying. Who's to say that Oscar could come champion and Carmella will be cute and just go ahead and cash in and boom, she's champion. Who's to say Charlotte might put Oscar in the figure four. Street done. Just saying. Y'all gotta look at that too. I mean, yeah, Oscar is the most undefeated, but streaks are meant to be broken. At the same time, the same thing goes for Charlotte. She never lost. I don't think she lost at a WrestleMania. So who's to say with her, she can lose. So... Best of luck for both them two, because it is Empress versus the Queen, because they're both not willing to bow down, but somebody's going to have to bow down that day. But that was all I had, and comment below your top five WrestleMania moments, if there's some that matched up to mine, or there's some that's um, different from mine, um, comment down below. Till then, um, happy WrestleMania week, and... Bye.